Cobb. I'm the Libertarian Party candidate in the 4th District. Uh, I'm also very pleased that the Congressman has uh, come here tonight. I'm very pleased with the representation of all four candidates. I think we may be the only district that's all here for you. Uh, as a Libertarian, I'm running for Congress because I have certain principles in particular that say government should be serving the people and not simply taking money from the taxpayers to give it to different people. I think there's a fundamental principle that money should not be taken even for a good cause and simply hand it over to other people. We have a system in the United States, we did this for 200 years before the 1930s, in which people voluntarily give money to private foundations, private charities, to their friends, to their neighbors. And I think that charity should begin at home. It should not begin with the IRS. And so I support the rights of disabled people. I support giving help to disabled people. I have a principal problem with taking money at the point of a gun and letting Congress give it to those people whom Congress prefers. There's a fundamental principle there. I think that people that are disabled deserve all of our support. They deserve their civil rights. And they deserve financial help. But it should not be done at the point of a gun. Social Security was set up in 1937, first started paying benefits in 1940. Every one of us ought to know that Social Security does not have a trust fund. It has a fiction with that label. But there's no money there. The money that was paid in through your payroll taxes has been spent almost immediately by the Congress. Social Security is, and was always intended to be, a Ponzi scheme. A scheme in which the money is paid in by one person and paid out the next day to different people. And because of the change in demographics with a smaller birth rate than they expected back in 1930, it's running out of money. The only way it can be sustained is to raise the retirement age up to like 68, 69, 70, 75 years old so that most people will be dead before they qualify for a pension. Or to dramatically increase taxes which will kill jobs. Now the U.S. government does have a lot of land, a lot of oil preserves, a lot of other resources. Those could be auctioned off and sold off to keep funding the system. But the main thing is the system is unsustainable and we need to think about how to keep the elderly that depend upon it from suffering. They, they depended upon it all their planning of their lives. I think we should phase it out. And so... I want to mention something that Powell Gamble said in his uh, speech a few minutes ago. One of the major problems that the employers face when they consider whether or not to hire a disabled person is the mandate, the mandates that the government imposes about health care. I do not believe that employers should have to pay a penny toward anybody's health care. It should not be connected to the job. Whether, you, like Janet, would support a, a single payer government system, that's a perfectly honorable system like Canada has, or if you prefer a totally privatized one in which individuals form their own insurance pools independent of employers, that would be a perfectly honorable system. But we should not force employers to pay for health insurance. It should not be part of the job. Employers should pay wages, period. Health care should be something that's paid for privately. There would be many, many more job opportunities if employers didn't look at a disabled person and says, oh my god, here's somebody with a disability or here's somebody with a family member with a disability. If I hire them, my insurance company will double and triple my premiums. Take the two, systems, two decisions separately. You should not have employers be burdened with the cost of health care at all. Okay. Keep in mind that we're talking not really about health care. We're talking about how health care is paid for. Health care in America is the best in the world. It's the most scientific, the most advanced. People come from all over the world to the United States to get health care. How it's paid for here is what's all screwed up. And it started with Congress back in the 1940s when they made it an employer mandate. Healthcare would work best if every decision that a patient makes with his or her doctor is a one-on-one -on -one decision without a third party in there trying to say, oh, I will pay for that, but I'll not pay for the other thing. Two important reforms. The first ought to be to make sure that you have full open price disclosure for all health uh, procedures. So that patients can know and can judge, do I want to pay that expensive amount for the procedure or not? Let the family and the patient make that choice. Second, the patient themselves should pay directly. <laughs> now, poor people should get financial aid. And once again, I would have that come from private charities and private donations, not from taxpayers. 
but you need to get it down to a two-person decision, patient and doctor, and then it will work. I support all forms of civil rights and civil liberties. I think that these are basic human rights. I support ADA because it's an anti-discrimination law. I think you should not discriminate against people on the basis of sex, on the basis of sexual preference, on the basis of disability, on the basis of uh, race. I support it. One thing that I objected to when it was first passed was the mandate that so much had to be invested to create the, uh, uh, the ramps and, and this wider staircases, but that's behind us. That's 30 years ago. It's not an issue anymore. New buildings uh, build wider staircases, build ramps, and that's good. I think that uh, people with disabilities, and that includes me, I'm not so disabled you might not notice now, but I will be in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years if I live that long. I think it affects all of us. I think it's a fundamental thing. And I believe that we need to have uh, public support, community support, and even the codification of those civil rights in law. I think that's good. I oppose mandates. I oppose when the government comes in and starts beating up on employers or forcing people to uh, expend money uh, civil rights. I'm opposed to the bailouts of all kinds. I think that the TARP and the bank bailouts were just unconscionable. They were taking a taxpayer money, uh, Federal Reserve money, and giving it to people that didn't deserve it. I really believe that the government should not bail anybody out. But keep in mind, more importantly, the housing crisis was caused by the government in the first place. Amen. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all those subsidies like that. All the <laughs> and then it causes a problem and then it steps in and says, oh, vote for me, I will bail you out. It always happens that way. I think we should get government out of these programs. There should not be any such government programs. You wouldn't have booms and busts if you didn't have the government in there causing booms and busts. I think it's just really a tragedy that we have the Federal Reserve in the first place as a central bank that's in a position to print money, create money, and bail out banks. That It was created in 1913 for the sole purpose of bailing out the rich bankers. Yep. We should abolish it. Regarding the tarp and stimulus, I don't like them, but I think they were a necessary evil, unfortunately, to keep our economy from collapsing. So I would change, I think, with the uh, the bank reform, that was a nice step to get to, to where they couldn't do that. The too big to fail would be another nice step. And I support the free market, and I oppose the government regulation system that causes free market prices to be jacked up because of taxes and regulations and restrictions. Gasoline prices are going up, and gasoline prices will go up over the next century as the world begins to run out of fuel. But this is also good because higher prices will cause more exploration in places like Siberia where there's lots of, lots of reserves that have not yet been tapped. Mm -hmm. I oppose schemes like cap and trade that artificially make fuel more scarce. I personally do not believe that human beings are causing global warming at all. I believe that there are not natural climate shifts. The world used to be a lot warmer in the Middle Ages. It was very, very cold in the 1700s and 1800s. It's now warming back up to the average. It will make all kinds of changes for human society. It will make uh, in our life more expensive in some ways and better in others. I think that we need to have more free market. Thank you very much for having me here. I always enjoy representing libertarian ideas to uh, all people. Uh, please vote for me on November 2nd. I'm the Libertarian Party candidate. I'm Joe Cobb. I think that the most important principle I'd like you to remember from visiting with me tonight is that I'm against using government force to regulate people, to constrain people, to tax people. I think that each of us is a sovereign individual and we should have the right to pursue our own lives and our own values. I think that the most difficult thing we have in the 20th century, this past hundred years, is the encroachment of this sort of giveaway philosophy in which we try to take from Tom to give to Peter. We just, we just we, we say, oh, well, Tom has too much money. Let's just take money away from him. Oh, Peter needs it. Let's give it to him. This is incoherent. You cannot have a system that runs that way. You have to have a system that respects individuals' rights, individuals' property, and gives them all the freedom to pursue their happiness and their prosperity in their own way.
Thank you.